YouTube, how's it going? John here at Herman Woodworks and getting back into some projects. Have this pile of maple that we brought back over from the shed. We're going to be getting it processed up for making tongue and groove boards for the overhang on the workshop. So that's going to involve taking it, sending it through the rigid R4330 thick 13 inch thickness planer, getting it all prepped and ready so that we can put it on the shaper and get it ready to, for the tongue and groove. So I've checked a lot of these boards. They're all pretty darn flat. Typically processing the stuff, you'd want to joint one side of the boards first to make sure that that's nice and flat and then send it through the planer. Well, they're all nice and flat. So I'm going to forgo that. Also too, some of these boards are a little bit thicker. They're, some of them are eight, 10 inches. And currently I only have a six inch joiner. So I'm going to forego that. Like I said, we're not doing the, taking the guard off and running both sides. We're just not doing that. So it's all going to go through here. We're going to make a big old mess and let's get to it. Let's go over the machine first. All right. So like I said, we're going to make a big old mess. I've already been processing a couple of boards just to kind of see how things were going before we got into this, yes, I don't have dust collection. I wear a mask, I blow this stuff all over the floor, and then I spend a couple of minutes cleaning the stuff up afterwards. I put it in bags and I give it to a friend and his wife use it for horse bedding. Keep in mind, another disclaimer, you can't do that for all wood. Stuff like black walnut and some of these other woods, it's not good for them. Check it. Maple's fine. Pine, obviously, that's what everybody uses. All right, back to the machine. So, like I said, we got a rigid R4330 13 inch thickness planer. Gonna do another disclaimer. After doing some of this wood, I've quickly already realized that eventually, I already knew that, eventually, I wanna get a bigger machine. This thing starts choking down some boards and it starts having a hard time. If you're processing a pile like this, you're going to be in for a headache. You probably want at least like a, one of these, like I know everybody raves about the DeWalt, like uh, 735s. I want to kind of go even a little bigger than that, like maybe like a nice grizzly unit of some kind. But back to this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add over, add this into the video here, just going over some of the features of this, of this rigid planer. So you have the foldable beds. They fold down, you know, so you can keep the board going through. This is your actual main bed. You know, sometimes you'll want to uh, actually wa wax that with a good wax. Any of this also, too, just to keep the boards going across it smooth. So, like I said in the video, or I'll go over in the video, this makes you go up. And it even says one turn equals a sixteenth of an inch. So that's why when, and a lot of the times I'm only really moving at like a sixty-fourth of an inch. But... Yeah, indicates down, indicates up. You can do repeatable cuts with this feature, but obviously you're on off. If you sometimes if you get chunking on it too hard, you might pop the fuse. You might have to hit this to reset it. Um, on the other side of it, here's your port for any of your chips coming out. This attachment, I've already loosened them up, but it's got these two pieces, one on each side. So that you can take for your dust collection take this off and in here and hold on before i do this let me make sure this is unplugged okay so unplugged but so right here are your blades roll it in and it'll click You'll, it clicks and you can unclick it by pushing this. We'll go over this later for when we're actually doing the blades. But yeah, so this has three blades on it. We'll go over more on that later on a different video. But set this out of the way for the time being so I can show you this on the exit side of it. If you lift this bed up, it's got this is like a squeegee for cleaning off the, the dust off the boards. And then it's got the tool for removing the bolts so that you can change out the blade. So all 
all pretty basic. That's why I just decided to do this in this. It's not like it's going to add a ton to the video. You know, nothing on this. It's got just the area for you to wrap your cord around. It's got where you can put your hands under here. Um, if you so choose to, later on, a lot of people end up bolting these down onto a table of some kind of unit. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Pretty basic. Um, I've got myself a little setup here. I've got some roller stands I can set my boards on, feed them through, and they come out. You don't want to have to try and balance the unit because next thing you know, especially most all these boards are eight foot long. By the time you start feeding them through and that weight's all on one side, it's going to start tipping this thing. And If you don't have it bolted down, that's just bad news bears all over. So let's kind of go over this. All right, so I'm only probably going to do one board here. Uh, I picked out this one. It's got some nice little knot figures. A lot of this has ambrosia striping. For anybody that's not familiar, it gets a beetle in it, the ambrosia beetle. It gets in here, hence you see the little holes. And the stain it leaves behind, it, it uh, is like a fungus that kind of takes over with it. And it leaves these really cool stripings in it. Some people call it like tiger maple, ambrosia maple. But, yeah, so got some stuff where some limbs went off. It was kind of towards the center of the tree. So, yeah, we're going to get this process. So what we're looking at, we're just a hair under 8 inches almost exactly one inch in thickness. Most of these I'm gonna be getting them down to about five eighths is what I'm gonna be looking for. Uh, the other side of this I don't think as pretty. I think it's gonna be same thing, a couple of ambrosia stripes. But let's get this set up uh, and get ready to feed through. All right, so we got the board sitting here on the rollers. Got it set up. So for anybody not familiar, with the rigids, I honestly don't know how DeWalt's are and stuff, or some of the other units. The rigid has what they call an Indicut, so it's got a little, keep in mind this thing's unplugged, it's got a little ball here that senses when the machine comes in, so it kind of indicates for you how much of a cut you're going to be making. Honestly, to be honest, I run this thing where I only would take about maybe almost like a 30 second off at a time. Because it starts choking stuff down, it bogs the machine down, you get a lot of chips, you get wavy cuts, it's not good. So what I usually do is I'll sit it in here and you adjust the machine down with this lever. And a lot of times I'll bring it, keep bringing it down until I see that indicator. See, so you can bring it up. I'm going to bring it down. I usually like keeping it pretty low. Start low and work your way up. Start seeing how the chips go. So... Let me mask up and get ready, and we'll do this. All right, just want to go over where we're at. Literally, just after a couple of passes, said these boards are pretty flat and pretty good. So look how quick this stuff comes to life, just getting this smoothed down. Like this is probably already basically, you know, it like sanded basically to like 180 or so. This is, this is nice. I just swapped out the blades. I'm going to do it again. Like I said, we'll do a video on that. But uh, yeah, this stuff really comes to life really quick. Honestly, I'm starting to fight myself. I almost don't want to use this stuff on the overhang. I literally want to go up to Home Depot and just buy some pine tongue and groove and save this stuff for another project. But it's here. I don't want to have to pay money to Home Depot. So, yeah, this stuff looks nice. 
All right, so I'm gonna get this thing flipped over, run the other side. This side's, yeah, this side's good. Eh, there's one spot right here. Might do, we'll probably do one more little light pass on this side just to get any of the actual original stuff just 100% off. We'll flip it over and do that. All right, so just want to go over where we're at. This stuff is some beauty, beautiful wood. Like I said, it's almost a shame to use this for overhang. Eh, maybe I'll sleep on this one. <laughs> Figure out what I want to do. Eh, just giving you a little preview of some of the other ones I've done. Some of these thick ones here. They got some great ambrosia stripes in there. Almost looks like coffee stains. Love it. Like I said, got a whole bunch more to do. Whether I put it in the video or not too, kind of doing like a quick little review of this thing. If you're just sending some couple boards, your homeowner, or just, you know, doing the individual projects, honestly, especially with fresh blades, this thing's been great. It puts a good, you know, puts a really nice finish on these. But honestly, I've already quickly realized, like I said, for starting to do stuff like this, processing a pile of stuff, almost it's... Yeah, it just it's not handling it. This, whether I show it in the video or not, gets clogged. That's where I have this stick. Public service announcement. If I put it in the video where I'm cleaning this thing out, don't do that. Turn it off, but it's, <laughs> it happens. So, all right, YouTube, it's been awesome. Sawdust. Go figure in the wood shop. <laughs> it's been awesome. Uh, like I said, we're going to do a couple part series on this, this rigid unit. I'm working on hopefully maybe getting something else for the shop, whether I do it now or when I build the new shop. Well, that's to be decided later. But as always, it's been awesome. I will talk to everyone again soon.